5 Unwritten NBA Rules You Didn't Know Existed Think you know the rules of the NBA? Think again! Beyond the rules that we all know and understand from the rule book, the NBA and its players and refs also go by a code of unwritten rules that are constantly being upheld. From star players getting the benefit of the doubt, to teammates mandatorily jumping into altercations, here are the unwritten rules of the NBA. Starting off with the obvious unwritten rule, don't run up the score once the game has been won. There is an unwritten agreement between teams to compete until the game is decided. Once the outcome of the game is obvious, though, it is considered extremely disrespectful for the team that is winning to continue to pile on through the last minute of the game. In these situations, both teams understand what the outcome of the game will be, so the intensity and effort on both sides drops off significantly. If a player takes advantage of this drop-off in order to pad their own stats with easy buckets, expect the opposing team to take exception. This unwritten rule causes at least a few scuffles a season. Just take this example between Alfred Payton and Jay Crowder. In 2020, the New York Knicks were trailing by 18 to the Memphis Grizzlies with under a minute left to play. New York lazily inbounds the ball, only for Memphis's Crowder to remain aggressive and steal the soft pass. Crowder takes the ball to the corner and violates one of the most important unspoken rules by jacking a three without taking any time off the shot or game clock. That's a no-no, my friend! The Knicks' Alfred Payton wasn't having any of it, and he laid Crowder out mid-shot, knocking off a mini-tussle in a game that was already decided. The crazy thing is, Payton was vindicated for the most part by other players and analysts. Here's Charles Barkley's take on the situation. I have no problem with that foul. All right. You can't take that three. Should he be suspended? No. Payton. No. He got, he got a game. Well, he threw uh, a yeah, punch. He, get a game. He, he threw got, a punch. I think he should a game. I think. Hold on, that's Alfred Payton? Yeah. The dude with yeah, the, he, he cut yeah. his hair. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. He, he cut yeah, his yeah. hair because he used to look like yeah. a damn idiot. But I, 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 it is clear that this rule is taken seriously, even throughout different generations of players. Nonetheless, you can see other examples of this rule violated, like the time that Russell Westbrook wasn't tolerating a late score from Darius Basley. And they throw it away. And there's the capper. The bow on it was Baisley dunking it. Uh-oh, and Russ is telling him, Russ is in Baisley's face, telling him not to do that. This is not going to sit well. Again, these two teams will play again next week at Staples Center. Or the time that Lance Stevenson almost started a brawl with the entire Raptors roster. Until you, they get into it because they think it's a real chump move that he tried to take the ball and made the shot. See, that one, that one Lance has got to know. To back that off. You can see that one coming. The shot, you, you're at the end of the game, they get the ball. Just goes to show how disrespectful players consider the move, and how it's one of the most obvious unwritten rules in the league. This unwritten NBA rule is one that applies to many other sports, and that is to always have your teammates back if something goes down. The NBA is a man's game, and as a result, there are a number of pushing scuffles, small tussles here and there, and your occasional Royal Rumble brawl, i.e. Malice at the Palace style fights. No matter what kind of fights go down, you rarely see a 1v1 altercation. Why? Because every player and every team adheres to this unwritten rule. When one player gets into a back and forth with an opponent, you best believe that both of their teammates will quickly join in the fray. This unwritten rule usually tends to calm the situation down, but every now and then it can escalate things into an even bigger altercation. Regardless of the effect it has on the game, this unwritten rule isn't going to change anytime soon. Moving on to another unwritten NBA rule, and that is, don't expect to see your shot go in if you shoot after the ref's whistle. Throughout an NBA game, there are dozens of reasons for a ref to blow the whistle and stop the game. Many times, during these breaks, the player who had the ball in his hands while the whistle was blown will try to get a practice shot off. Usually, this shot is for the shooter to just get a free practice shot, or to help find his range in a game. When these shots go up, 
the unwritten rule of rejecting these shots goes into play. It doesn't matter how it gets done, but the defender cannot let the shooter see the ball go through the net. Just check out Russell Westbrook here. After a timeout was called, the Pacers' George Hill takes a three that obviously wouldn't have counted, but Westbrook doesn't care and goes all out to punch the ball out from under the net while falling to the ground. It's not just a fiery player like Westbrook either. Mostly all players in the league practice this similar principle if they're in the opportunity to block the shot. Just look for this unwritten rule in the next game you watch, because it will surely be executed. Up next is the unwritten rule that is constantly in effect when superstars are on the floor, which is the star gets preferred treatment when compared to the average player. The NBA is a league that is driven by their star players on and off the court, so it might come as no surprise to hear that these players get treated slightly better than the others. The biggest example of this would be LeBron James, who tends to get his way with most refs. Whether it's him getting to the free throw line on a sketchy foul call, or the ref allowing some of his physical play to go on without a whistle. It's not rare to see LeBron getting the benefit of the doubt with the Zebras. It's not just Braun either. KD, Doncic, Trey Young, and all the superstar players get a little bit better treatment than your average Joe. Just look at Giannis's free throws as an example. The rules clearly state that you have 10 seconds to shoot a free throw at the line, but the unwritten rules supersede this when a superstar is shooting. It got so bad that crowds had to count themselves just to make sure rules were being enforced. Pitch at FanDuel.com slash over under. And you know Giannis is going to get the 10 second treatment. They're giving him the quick count now. They started as soon as he got the ball. And the, and Superstar players getting preferential treatment isn't the only unspoken rule that officials are involved in either. The biggest unwritten rule with the NBA officials is to not call a traveling violation, ever. Okay, maybe they won't go this far, but it gets pretty close. While it could be called at least a number of times per game, officials tend to stay away from ticky-tack violations such as traveling in certain situations. Just look at this ridiculous no-call on Corey Brewer against OKC. Clearly, Brewer took about, oh, six steps between his last dribble and his finish at the rim. But this is the NBA, and the unwritten rules tell the refs to just let it slide. It happens so much throughout the league, to the point where Shaqton a Fool was able to make a 10 plus minute long compilation of all the no call travels. Journey. Oh, journey. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> one. one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my goodness. That's too many steps. While traveling violations are rarely called, most players and coaches don't have too much of a problem with it because of how it is consistently not called, making it yet another understood but unspoken rule of the NBA. One more unspoken rule involving the refs has to be mentioned, and that is the referees will give out makeup calls to even out a bad call. We've all witnessed it. A player drives and gets blatantly hacked, but he doesn't get the call. Both the players and his coach are angry and giving the ref an earful. Next time down the court, the refs call a weak offensive foul in the favor of the team who did not get the right call on the other end of the floor. A clear makeup call simply made to level out for the one foul that they missed. Former All-Star Gilbert Arenas, in an interview with Fobo Sports, confirmed that officials do make these types of calls throughout the game. When asked if makeup calls are a real thing in NBA games, Arenas responded, 1,000%. We talk a lot, too, in the league about makeup calls. Like, ref might miss a, a blatant call and then make something up. Do you, do you think that's true? Do oh, 1,000. Well, and he's right. While no ref would come out and say it straight up, there are countless instances where one foul or violation is called for the sole purpose of making up for a call that should have been called but was missed. So that's it. That's our list of unwritten rules. Did we miss anything? Are any of these unwritten rules bad for the integrity of the game, or do they add a level of mutual understanding between the players, refs, and coaches? Let me know what you think about these topics and more in the comments down below.